some devotees are empowered by their spiritual master to spread Krishna consciousness. They're empowered in different ways. And some devotees are not. I'm not. So? So what? <laughs> I do the best I can, okay? So that's the position I'm speaking from, is someone who's not empowered. How does someone become empowered? They become empowered by following the process. And the process is said by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master, bona fide spiritual master. Acquire from him submissively and render service impart knowledge to you and be able to see the truth. It doesn't say just approach a Diksha guru. It doesn't say just approach a Shiksha guru. It says approach a bona fide spiritual master. That's the process. Inquire from him submissively and render service. That's the process. Diksha, shiksha, whatever, it's the same process. That's how you approach a spiritual master. That's how someone becomes empowered. Now, for the rest of us, I, I have that as part of my history. Back then, when my spiritual master was on the planet, I was following the process along with 5,000 other people. <laughs> and so I got some benefit. After his disappearance, it became a little confusing how to continue on. <clears throat> so that's another story. So from this position of not being empowered, maybe even disempowered, does that mean I have no, my life is ruined, I have no access to Krishna consciousness, I failed? Like when you have some materialistic endeavor. If you don't reach the goal, you fail. Like, you know, you're planning for a trip or a vacation. If you don't actually get to the point of going on the trip or the vacation, then all your efforts up to that point were a waste of time because you didn't reach the goal. But spiritual life's not like that. <laughs> Listen to that noise. There are peacocks here, and it's mating season. And some of the people that live in the area like to agitate them, so they honk their horns just to hear them scream and yell like that. <laughs> so it's not very peaceful sometimes. So somebody's either doing fireworks or something, aggravating the peacocks. Okay. So for someone who's not empowered, who's struggling to follow the process but is not doing a very good job of it, or may have even kind of given up even trying to struggle and follow the process, just trying not to do bad things. And trying to somehow or other remember Krishna and just living 
a life, working a job or having a family or whatever it is they do. But they're not endeavoring to become empowered by Krishna for service. They just want to like hang on for dear life and <laughs> just do the best they can in that position. So what happens to someone like that? You know, at initiation, there's a mantra, Om Apavitra, Apavitra Va, so on. And when I heard it the first time, I was really stunned. It says, purified or unpurified, one who remembers the lotus-eyed Lord at the time of death attains to the spiritual kingdom or something like that. So even if someone is not empowered, like me, I'm not empowered. <laughs> no. Not empowered, huh? <laughs> if I can practice remembering Krishna, then I don't have to have any kind of fear. But for someone who wants to be empowered, wants to be a valuable servant of the Lord, wants to help his mission, such a person, their life is it's glorious. But the way they become empowered is by following the process. So that doesn't mean just reading a book or watching a video lecture. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. Especially of an acharya who has disappeared. Srila Prabhupada, I'm of this I've come to this understanding and this is this is where I'm at. And it's not to offend anyone. I won't if I can help people. But after an acharya disappears, he's not available for diksha. And now I'm also understanding he's not available for siksha either. His books, his teachings, they're here. They enliven, they guide. They enthuse people to take up Krishna consciousness. But what does that mean, take up Krishna consciousness? It means for those that desire to become empowered representatives of the Lord and serve like that, that means surrendering to a bona fide spiritual master, inquiring from him submissively, and rendering service. For others who are not going to become particularly empowered servants, but who are just going to hang on, eat as much prasadam as they can, <laughs> and try not to get into too much trouble in the material world, Then they can, they don't, they won't be going through that process. But purified or unpurified, one who remembers the Lord's side, the Lord at the time of death attains a spiritual kingdom. So not everyone's going to become an empowered representative of the Lord. That kind of empowerment is actually an empowered incarnation of the Lord. It's a type of incarnation. Not everyone's going to achieve that. I'm not there. <laughs> no. At one time I thought I could get there, and I really tried, but 
too many stumbling blocks. And um, so, we'll just tell you a little more unempowered position. <laughs> and uh, feeling quite blissful, actually. But that's what it is. And what I'm seeing is people say, oh, how about my Shikshi Guru? I'm reading his books. I'm, he's my guru. No, he's not your guru. He's not your Shikshi Guru, and he's not your Dikshi Guru. He's not available for that. But he is there in his books. Just like... I sometimes read the books of other acharyas who, in our line, who have disappeared. Um, read sometimes uh, reading something by Jiva Goswami. Oh, it is so wonderful! Oh, the way he presents. Krishna consciousness and the things he says and the realizations and the oh boy it is so enlivening but is he my shiksha guru? No. He's a previous acharya whose writings and teachings enliven people in Krishna consciousness. But he's not my personal shiksha guru. I'm reading Brahma Sanhita. Does that mean, and it's wonderful, I mean, it's ecstatic. It's, I'm transported to reading Brahma Sanhita. Does that mean Lord Brahma is my Shiksha Guru? No. <laughs> so people are reading Srila Prabhupada's books and they're getting all kinds of enlivened and it's really ecstatic. But does that mean he's their personal Shiksha Guru? No. <laughs> He's the founder of Charya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. And he enlivens the whole world with his preaching and his writings and his books. But Shiksha Guru is something else. Shiksha Guru is a one-on-one, -on -one, very personal relationship that you make a commitment, you approach, inquire submissively, render service, to a person standing right there in front of you. You shake your guru. He's present in a body. <laughs> <laughs> because the spiritual master is a special type of incarnation of Krishna. These are very confusing issues for a lot of devotees, and especially new people, it's very confusing. But when the disciple is ready, Krishna sends the spiritual master. I mean, that's just the way it works for everyone when the disciple is ready. So, this, from this position of unempowered, <laughs> way out in left field somewhere, If this can help someone, oh, that's nice. But when I have these realizations and these understandings become clear, I really want to try to share them. So, 
I can see it now, all the red flags. Oh, no, he's my, he's my shit shit. He's, oh, oh. I can see it now. But that's, it's not. A spiritual master is a special type of incarnation, which means they have to be incarnated, <laughs> which means in a physical form. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, so. Um, back under my rock. <laughs> Jai. All glories to all the Vaishnavacharyas. Hare Krishna.